All right, guys, how to know when to super? Well, you'll see this frosting. We call this frosting, this white wax. You'll see that this is mostly full. You can see they've, they've built comb. They've filled this out. Excuse me being one-handed here. Now it's heavy and full of honey. These need a super. Now when you pop the lid, if it does like that, they might need one too. Now this one, they don't need one just yet, but they'll probably get one. They've got that cleaned up pretty good. Check out what else is going on here. These one will need one. See all that white wax? <clears throat> See how these are bearding? And the cracks and not all of, off the front. These will take a super. You see that white wax, that frosting? Mm -hmm. That frosting means they've got that cleaned up and putting it in there. These take a super. You don't want them to run out of room, guys. That's the main thing. It's important that they don't run out of room. Uh, those supers, they're not going to make you any honey sitting at the house. So get them stacked up and get the bees working in them and make your honey crop. Hey, guys, I'm putting comb honey supers on. So this colony here has pulled a super of honey out really well, burring it up. We've got good wax production going on in the second box. It's partially full. They're building comb. They're, they're on a good nectar flow. So this is a good candidate for me. For comb honey super. So you, you want a buffer box. A buffer box between the brood nest and your comb honey super. This is going to keep your tracking down. Uh, by tracking I'm talking about propolis and pollen and things of that nature that the bees are going to track up into this comb super and uh, make it unattractive. So we have our buffer. Now we've given them space. We're going to put their second extracting super back on top that they'd begun working on. That way they have their space, they have their options. And if this don't work out, I'll be putting this comb super on another box. Um, but that's what I'm looking for when I'm first placing comb honey supers. I'm looking for a strong colony that's drawing a lot of wax. Uh, I'm looking for the flow to not just be started, but actually going strongly. Uh, I need these boxes drawn out quickly. I don't need the bees uh, kind of playing with them, going on and off with the nectar flow, uh, chewing up the wax and everything. So I need a heavy flow on. I need the bees to draw it out quickly. Um, and this colony has given me all the signs that they're going to do that for me so we're going to continue on supering um, this colony here this was a nuke um, flows on good you can see we gave them a super no excluder they come up they worked it really well then we smoked the bees down put the excluder on now these are going to get another box so that's what we're doing out here today guys
you got any questions about supering, uh, starting up with your comb hunting supers, let me know and I'll catch you around. See this queen right here? So, I guess it was uh, last week, my niece was with me and we were checking these nukes, see what was queen right. I had, uh, she was doing really good job spotting queens and I felt like her confidence was up enough that she could catch the queen and hold the queen and I was gonna mark this one. And I, I let her pick her up and she put her in her other hand and just dropped her. Dropped her right here in this grass. <clears throat> Couldn't find her. And you know, most times you would think she'd be lost. So that's why I wanted to make this quick short for you guys. Um, with mating nukes and hives where the queen has mated at that spot, you have a really good chance of her coming back home because she's oriented to that spot. Uh, if it was an introduced queen or a hive you'd moved around, there may be a chance that she don't find her way back or she tries to go into the wrong one. But for this one, uh, she was probably over in this area where she dropped her. Um, lots of chaos going on, but she did find her way back. 